on daf ayin ches omid beis about midway through the amud towards the end of a line it should say Omar Rav Chana Got it. Omar Rav Chana Bar Ada this is a comment on the Mishnah that establishes that the Nasinim are not allowed to marry into the Jewish people and what is the basis the source and the reason behind this Nasinim David Gazar Aleyam David instituted a zera that they would not be allowed to marry into the Jewish folk. Shenemar, as the Pesach says, Vayikra ha-melech la-giv'onim vayomar alehem. And the king called them in, and he tried to ask them, bidivre ritzui, with appeasement, that they should give mechila over the sin of Shaul Hamel. Shaul Hamel killed out a city called Nov Ir Kohanim. And as a result, the Givonim, who were working in the employment of the members of that city in the capacity of, uh, of Chotve Eitzim, etc., they had lost their entire employment because the city was wiped out by Shaul Hamel. As a result, many Givonim died and perished of hunger. And David Amelch was asking the Givonim for Machila. And the Pasuk says, Va Givonim lo mi Yisrael Hema. So these Psukim are in Shmuel Bays in chapter of Aleph. So the Givonim were Amorim, they weren't Jews, and they were Osir Lavo Bakal, and David Amelf made Xera that even if they would convert, we would not accept their conversion, and they could not marry Jewish, Jewish girls or boys marry their girls. My time ago, Zara Leib. What was the reason for this Xavier? The Xiv, Vahira of be made David Shalosh Shana, Shana Shana. It was a famine in the land, a drought, three years consecutively. Bishana Rishona, Omar Lehem David turned to Klal Yisrael and he said, Gemma Ove Avodas Kochavim Yech Bachem. Maybe there are idol worshippers amongst you. The Xiv, Vavadatem Elohim Achirim, Shtachvisem Lehem, second parish of Kriyachma. And then the punishment for that idolatry is the rains will cease to flow, to fall down from the heavens. Bodku. So the Jewish people checked. I don't know exactly how they did this, how they accomplished this, but below Matzah. They were able to bring back a report to David that there was no idolatry amongst the Jewish people. Now the drought continues for another year. So Bshnia on the second year, Amalem David says to Klai Sol Shema Ovre Avera Yeshbachem. And the phrase Ovre Avera means nus, immorality. And what's the punishment for immorality? The rain stopped coming down. Dixiv, as it says, and this is a posuk in Yermio and Novi. The Manu Revivim Umalkosh Lohoya. And Yore and Malkosh. Yore are the rains that fall in the month of Cheshman, the lighter rains. And Malkosh are heavier rains that fall later on in the season, close to Nisan. Umetach Isha Zona Hoya Loch. And Yermio identifies the cause of this drought because of Isha Zona Hoyalok. So it means for the sin of Znus, the rain stopped falling. Bud Kuvalo Mot. Klal Yisrael checked out. They Again, I don't know exactly how they were able to be absolutely sure, but they found no, no Znus.
Now we get to the third year. Shona Shlishis, Omer Lehem, David says to Klai, so Shema Postkate, Stokham, Barabim, Yeshbachem, Vedosim. Maybe many of you publicly took upon yourself a pledge to, to give charity, and you never lived up to your pledges. The Chsiv, Nisim, Veruach, so Postkim Mishle, Yeshbachem, I'm sorry, Nisim, Veruach, Vegeshem, Ayin. Nisim means clouds, very dark clouds, and the Ruach, the wind, is blowing these clouds, and no rain is falling. And Shlomo Amel gives the reason for this, Ish Mishalel Bimatas Sheker. Because people were posting stock of Aravim, they publicly pledged, and they took pride in their pledges. And yet they were not Makayim, they did not fulfill their pledges. Bud Kuvalo Matsu. All right. Three years of drought. They can't find the cause. Omar David, David finally turns inward and he declares, Aina Dover Tali Elabi. I'm the cause of this. And here they quote the Rambam that says that the Melech is the Lev HaUma. He's the heart of the country. And there must have been a chisaran, some deficiency in the way that I, meaning David, would control and be manig the Jewish people. The Eitz Yosef is the one who quotes this halacha of Leif Uma, but the Arach Laner, that's Rav Etliger, who lived about two centuries ago, he asked the question, why didn't David check himself out on the first year, not only that, he could have checked out Gili Arias and Stucker and Snus. He could have checked out in the first year of Odazar, Gili Arias and, and Stucker, and then he could check himself out. So that's something that has to be addressed why he did this in a pattern year after year after year until finally he realized. The Pasuk testifies that David sought Pnei Hashem. And the Gemara is going to explain what is Pnei Hashem. He conferred with the Urim Vitumim because this was a national catastrophe. There was no rain coming down for three years. My mashma, how do you see in the words by Yavakesh David is Pnei Hashem that he consulted with the Urim Vitumim? And now the Gemara quotes Xer Shava, Omar Abelazar, Asya Pnei Pnei, Ksiv Hachav Yavakesh David is Pnei Hashem, Uksiv Hasam. In the Posigim Ba Midbar, Perk of Zion, which describes the Urim Vitumim, the Shalom Ben Mishpada Urim, again, Lifne Hashem. I mean, you take the word Lifne and you focus on the three last letters, Pne. So She'ela, the Urim Vitumim is called Lifne Hashem. Vayavake Shtobit is Pne Hashem means that he asked the Urim Vitumim. Now we'll soon see that the Urim Vitumim gave him two answers, two sins, and David was able to rectify one, but not the other. By Yomar Hashem, and God responded through the Urim Vitumim, El Shol Vel Beis HaDomim Asher Al Asher Hamis Es HaGivonim. It was a great Chil Hashem, that as a result of Shoal's actions, the people of Givon died. And that's one cause of the drought. And David is going to get on, get working on this. But the other cause is El Shoal Shalom Nispad Kalocha. Shoal was killed by the Plichtim. 
and they took his body and they attached it to what's called Beit Shem. And the people, the Jews of Yavesh Gilad, snuck in the middle of the night and they took back his body. And in total concealment, they buried the body of Shaul. But because this was all done on the QT, there was never a real hesped. I mean, they did give a hesped, but it wasn't l'fichvodo shel shol. V'el beis ha'domim asher al asher hemis es ha'givoni. So we're going back to the beginning and the first answer. V'hechi hecha matzinu b'shol she'hemis ha'givoni. No psukim seemed to indicate that shol put the givoni to death. El mitoch shahor ha'gnov ir kohanim. He wiped out Nov, the city of Kohen, because he accused them of supporting David in a rebellion against him. They had a status of Morei B'Malchus, according to Shoal. And shall you masapkim lahem mayim umazah. And the Givonim were in the employment of the city of Nov, of the Kohenim. And they were paid because they were Chotvei Eitzim and Chavei Mayim. And this was all for the purpose of the Mizbeach, because the Kohanim would bring these Eitzim and this Mayim to the Mizbeach. So when Shol put the city of Nov Ir Kohanim to death, then as a result, the Givonim basically died of starvation. Ismail of Akosukil Harogan. And the apostle considers it as if he was responsible for the murder, the death of the Givoni. The Gemara says there's something strange going on here. The Urvitum gives two answers, two responses to what caused this drought, and they seem to be contradictory. Katova. El Shaul On the one hand, the punishment to Israel is because they did not eulogize the great Shaul Melch properly. So we're talking about the great kavod of Shaul. U Nelavov of U is me idach, meaning on the other side, Katava Hakoshbach, who brings about the destruction because of the hate of Shaul Asher Hamis Hagivonin. How do you reconcile this? You know, you're playing, you're playing the game from two, from two ends. Kumar says, in. There's no contradiction. Why? When a person is condemned for his sins, then in Shamayim, they bring forth his Maisim Tovin. It's not just all black right. and despair and negative. The Omer Eishlok is my Siv. What does the Pesach mean in Tzfanya HaNovi? Bakshu es Hashem kol anvei eretz Hashem mishpato pa'olo, pa'olu. And it says the following. Ba'asher mishpato. Mishpato means when we judge and condemn a person for his wrongdoings, but sham pa'olo. In that same context, we mention pa'olo. Pa'olo means it's Sidkus, the great things that he accomplished. Therefore, when we judge Shol for his sin, because he was responsible for the death of the Gonim, we also mention his stuckos. Now, Klal Yisrael are guilty of not eulogizing Shol for all his great stuckos. Now that David has these two answers, what could he do to bring about the cessation of this terrible drought? Omar David. Shaul Nafkulahu. From the time of the death of Shaul, Nafku means they passed. What passed? Here we turn to Nafayim Pes. Tresar Yarche Shata. Chazal say that a person needs consolation for the loss of a close one up to 12 months. After 12 months, 
It's not really a great kavod to eulogize the dead after an entire year of 12 months have passed by since his death. And it's as if they already had tanchumen, consolation for that death that took place a year ago. So therefore, as far as the chait of shalom nispeit shol kehil chaso, which caused the rav, David came to the conclusion, I can't fix up that sin. It's over his mano. It's too late. However, as far as the other chait of shol, which is called the nesinim, that's another word synonymous for the giv'onim. They were called nesinim because they were given to chotfei eitzim and shavei mayim. David says, nikrinu v'naisinu. Let's call in the givonim and try to appease them so they'll be mochel. And the Pasuk says, Vayikra HaMelech, this is Shmuel Beis again, Perkhof Al, Vayikra HaMelech Ligivonim Vayomer Aleyem, he sent them Divrei Ritzui, that they should be Mavir Al Midoseyem, they should be mochel Shol and his family, what can I do for you in order to be mechaper for the sin? So that you will bless, Hashem. you'll pray on our behalf that the drought should cease. The response to the givonim was harsh and cruel. We're not going to demand any sort of compensation from Chol or his family not money, not gold. We want blood. We want death. The fashos. The Einlanu Ishla Hamis the Israel. We cannot kill the Jewish people because they weren't guilty. All we want is to destroy the Zera of Shoal, the offspring of Shoal. You take Lanu Shiva and Nashimi Banov. Hand over seven of the children of Shoal or the descendants of Shoal, Vehokanum, and we will hang them up, meaning we'll kill them and then hang them. Lashem, for the sake of God, meaning to notify or publicize that God meets out justice. And when, Shol, when David Amel heard this akasha, this request to the Givonim, that Paisinu, he tried to be Mephias them by giving them money, large funds and compensation, lo Mephaisu. But nevertheless, they were unwilling to be appeased. They wanted blood. They wanted seven people from the children of Shol to be killed. Omar David said, look at this nation and compare them to the Jewish people. I guess you'd say fair, you know, fair on these people that they're blocking us, making it impossible for us to live and bring about the termination of this drought. Klal Yisrael had three essential characteristics. Rachmanim b'shodim b'gom le'chasonim. How do we know this? Rachmanim, they are compassionate because the Pasuk says, and this is a Pasuk in Dvarim Perkut Gimel, V'nasan l'cha rachamim v'richamcha v'herbecha. HaKosh through Moshe Rabbeinu says about Klal Yisrael, that they are bestowed, they are endowed with the meat of rachamim, the merachim al abrios, this is one of the essential midos of Klal Yisrael that don't exist with the Umos Olam. They want blood. They are not willing to forgive. There's no Rachmanus. Klal Yisrael of Baishonin. Dechsev. The Pasuk says in Shmos, Perek Chaf, Bavur Tia Yerosa al Pnechem Levilti Secheto. And this is the Mid of Busha, Gomli Chasodim, Tichsiv, it says in Parashas Vayera, by Avram Avinu, Laman Yitzav Es Bonav Es Bnei, Ves Beso, Achrov, Lishmar, Vishamru Derech Hashem, Lassus Tzedakah, U Mishpat, Dea Gomli, 
chasodim. Derech Hashem is gmilas chasodim. And David Melch adds the following comment: Kol sheyesh po shlosha simonim alolu royally dovek beumazu. Those who have these three simonim, we can allow them. Their spiritual or moral genetic code is such that it is appropriate to let them marry into the Jews. But the Givonim, they don't want to be Merachim on Shoal. They don't they refuse to be Mochel as David had requested of them. And they're not Ru'uyim Li Dovek for Israel. And therefore David was Gozar Lam and Isar Chasnas. And now we go on in the story. And the Posse concludes, And the so Dovin Amel takes two of Shaul's grandchildren through his daughter. No, no, we have five from Michal, just one second, and two from Ritzba Bas Aya. So Ritzba was married to Shaul. She was the daughter of Aya. And she gave birth to Armoni and Mephiboshes. And Michal, the daughter of Shaul, gave birth when she married Adrieli to another five sons. And David takes the five sons of Michal Bas Shaul and two sons of Ritzba, who were born to Shaul, and he gives them over to the Givonim. So the Gemara is going to ask a number of questions on this. Maishna Hani, first of all, why did David choose these? They were apparently other children of Shaul. Long discussion here in the Marsha about who these children were exactly, but Omar Afuna have Virum. David took all the descendants of Shaul and he passed them Lifnei Ha'aron in front of the Aron. And the Aron was collate those who were Chayv Misa. Collate means he froze them in their tracks, like they couldn't move their feet. And those who were not to be killed, they, the Aron did not respond in that way. Kol Misha Aron Kolto. He says here in the, in the footnote, Raglov Hoyu Nechazos Bi Oretz, is that was Nifsak Dino Lemisa. That was a sign from heaven that they would be killed. Kol She'ein Aron Kolto L'chaim. They would be able to remain alive. Now the Gemara asks another question. Masiv Rav Chana Bar if the Bnei Shaul that were given over by David to the Giv'onim were called on Aaron, why does it say by Yachmol HaMelech Al Mephiboshes Ben Yonason Ben Shaul? Mephiboshes is the grandson of Shaul. And it would seem from the Psukim, as we saw earlier, that Mephiboshes was actually called on Aaron. And yet, we know that he was spared. And in his place, David took another one to be Mashlim, the number seven. So first, the Gemara thinks, Shalom Haviro, that David Amel had such special feeling because of his relationship to Yonah's son and also to Mephibosheth, that he never risked the possibility that if he would pass in front of the Aron, because maybe the Aron would be calling him. So the Gemara rejects that. Does David have, have, have the ability to like be prejudiced in favor of Mephibosheth and not to be maver him? 
it should have been fair to all of them. Again, a long discussion in this time in the Ben Ichai and Ben Yoyada about why this would be called Mas upon him if he would be, not be Mavir Mephiboshes in front of the Aron. And the Gemonim only asked for seven. They didn't ask for specific people. Mephiboshes was not singled out by them. Gemara answers, no. You're right. Elahaviro, Uklato, that in fact, the Aron pointed out Singled out Mephibosheth, he should be one of the seven to be killed. And he froze, as we said before, his feet in the tracks. But Bikesh Olav Rachmin Uflato. But David prayed Tashem, and God accepted his prayers. And through the Tfilos of David Amelech, Plato, the Aaron, sort of pushed him out so that Mephibosheth was able to leave, and he was not captured. So the Gemara says, Akati, Masu, Panam Yesh, Bedover. Okay, fine. So it was after the Oron was collate Mephibosheth, the Xerah was on Mephibosheth, that he should be killed. And David now shows favoritism to Mephibosheth, and through his tefillos, he's Mavakish al Rachamim, and now he's got to take someone else from the descendants of Shoal to replace Mephibosheth, that's Masu Ponum. The Gemara answers, El Shabikesh Rachmim Chaloyik Litenu He gave an extra prayer that the Oran should not be collate Mephibosheth. So the final Maskan of the Gemara is that Mephibosheth was not caught by the Oran. So the Yaakov asks, okay, fine. David was mavakish on Mephibosheth that the, the Oren should not be collated. him. Why is that not considered Messias punning and favoritism? He didn't pray on behalf of any of the others that descended from Beishol. And he answers, the Yaakov answers, Mishum Shevadai Mutal Tzpalel al Atzolas Chavero. No question that if a friend is about to be killed, you're allowed to dive in to save him. And not everyone has to know about that. And if someone else ends up being taken in his place, that's not your problem. But if he was already niklat by the Aron, and then he's going to be vakech rachamim, and the Aron is going to loosen its grip, that's already public mass upon it. Next cash of the Gemara. How could David HaMelech, I think this is the most important part of the sugya. how could David HaMelech acquiesce to the demand of the Givonim? Vaksiv, the Torah says, V'lo yumsu, lo yumsu avos albonim. Where is this pasuk? I, I know the pasuk, but uh... um, what's that? Oh, it's in Dvarim. In Dvarim. Yeah. Not sure okay. Partial, but it's, it's in Dvarim near the end. Okay. Not sure why the. Uh... My Gemara is letting me down over here. <laughs> I'm sure it's here somewhere, but I'm not finding it. Anyway, so we don't punish the children for the sins of their father. So that if Shaul was guilty, why should his children be killed for the sin of their father? Omrab Chiyabar Abba Omrab Yochanan. Again, I'm about to read a Gemara, which I find very difficult. Mutov Shetayokeros Achas Minatora Bial Yishalel Shem Shomayim Bifar Hesia. Okay, the commentary based on Rashi says the following. True, the Allah is 
that we don't we don't take the life of the son for the sin of his father. But in this particular case, there was a terrible chilul shem shomayim b'farhesi. The nations of the world were declaring that the Jewish people are not the type of people that you would want to join into. I'll read to you the Hebrew. He says, Ein Yisrael re'uyim li dovek bahem. Why? Because elu pashtu yedeim begivonim, they wiped out the city, and, and now as a result, the Givodim have no Mizonos. And the Jews allow this to go on without avenging the death of Givonim. And therefore, Nitnu Givonim so we balance two things on the scale. We weigh two possibilities. One is Loyumsu Avas al The other is the Chil Hashem of the Umas Olam saying, Look how the Jews are letting this go by. The immorality of causing the death of Givonim without any justification, and they don't punish the sinners. But again, the language of Rabbi Chia, Te Oker, Achas, Os Achas, Minatora. I don't know. That really doesn't sit well with me. We're going to take the lives of the children who are guiltless because of the sin of their father in order to prevent Chil Hashem Befarhesia. I don't know. Is that how we pass Gil is that it? Is that Does that comply with the Shulchan Aruch, for example? I don't know. In the footnote, the Ritva says that Os Achas is Lav Dafka, but rather it's referring to Mikra Mullet. The entire Pasuk of Yumsu Ovas Al Badim is now being, it being trampled upon. It's being uprooted. But in order to prevent Chil Shab, Chil Shem Shemai. I'm also perplexed here because. The Jewish religion is not actively seeking out Gerim. Right. You know, we have to paskin based on our Allah. If the Allah is lo al banim, then I don't care about what the Umas Olam are going to think, and they won't want to join the Jewish people. I mean, if you want to say that maybe the, the Goya will rise up against us and destroy us, that's one thing. And another reason why I'm perplexed here is maybe the Gemara should have justified David's actions in order to bring, a, bring about a termination of the fast. I'm sorry, the drought. Now we go back to the B'nai Shol. We said that the seven B'nai Shol that were given over to the Gevodim were hung up. Batikach Ritzor Bas she was the wife of Shol, Esasak. Vatateula es Hatsur. The Tsur is the mountain upon which her children, who were born of Shalshol, were hung up by the Givonim. Mitchilas Katsir, that's during the month of Nisan, the beginning of the harvest season. Ad Nitach Mayim Alem in Until so she's like protecting the bodies of her children. And this is going on for months until the rains would start coming down. She protected the corpse, the corpses, so that the birds would not attack them and eat them up or the chaisa sada. So the Gemara asks the following question. It would seem that she was protecting the bodies up on the mountain. Why didn't Klal Yisrael take down the bodies from the mountain? There's a chiv of kvura immediately on the same day that the, that the person dies. How would they allow this to go on such that the mother Bas, Rivka, Ritzvah Basai would have to protect the, the bodies that were hung up from the right. Ofa Shomayim? Um, Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi, 
Rabbi Shimon ben Yotzadot, Mutav Chetayoker Oz Achas Mena Torah, which is the Easter of Halona Sames, the Iskade Shem Shomayim Bifar Hesia. Unbelievable. The bodies hung up on this high mountain would cause a Kiddush Shem Shomayim publicly. Why? Sheyu Ovrim Vishavim Omrim, Ma Tivon Shal Elu. Why are these hung up on the, on the tree? And the answer that they would get was, They are the children of kings. So once again, the passers by would say, What was their sin for which they were punished? And the answer that they got was, Pashtu Yedeim Begerim Gururim. This is a description of the Givonim whose Parnassah was taken away. That's called Pashtu Yedeim. And the Gururim. Gururim means like they're low. The Marsha, I'm sorry, the Marshal has a slightly different interpretation of the word Gururim. He says, May Alem is Gairu. So Gururim is Milosh and Giru. But the Jewish people never accepted them as Gairim. And not only that, even though these people are Gerim Gurim, nevertheless, we're going to punish those, again, whose father was responsible for their death. That's how dedicated the Jewish people are to justice. Amru, so the Omri Jochen said, This is an unbelievable nation. They were so machmir, even against the children of kings, giving them over to be killed to death by the Givonim. Is B'nai Yosef Salkavakama? Look how, how much more so they would be very. Strict in meeting out justice to the Pshutim, to the Yotos. Uma Gerim Grurim Kach. These are Gerim that we said in the Marshal that really were not interested in any sincere way of Gerus. And yet for them, they were Machmir to punish those who were responsible for the death of those. Members of those people, that people are Gerim Yisrael, Achas Kavakama, how much more so would they be Machmir to meet out justice to their own, to their own people? And this Kiddush Hashem, which again, it's hard for us to exactly get a, you know, wrap our heads around it, but this great Kiddush Hashem through the Mishpat of Klal Yisrael brought about an entire revolution of Gerim. Miyad immediately netvasu al Yisrael me'evachamichim elef Gerim, 150,000 Gerim. And the Gemara is going to put together a number of psukim to arrive at this number of Gerim. Shenemar vayhi l'shlomo shivim elef nosei sabal u'shmonim elef chotzei v'bahar. These are the Gerim that converted to Judaism during the time of Shlomo's father, David. And now the Gemara wants to analyze, how do you know that these Nosei Sabal, or these Chotzvim Bahar, were in fact Gerim? Vidilma Yisrael have them, maybe these were Jewish people who were working in that capacity. Lo Salka Daita, Yichsivu Bnei Yisrael, O Shlomo Evan. David uh, Shlomo Melch never imposed upon any of the Jewish people that kind of physical labor. And therefore, it must have been that these were Gerim. Maybe they weren't Avodim. And they weren't Gerim. Maybe they were just hired help. They were paid a salary to do this work. How do you know they were Gerim? And the Gemara answers, Ella mehacha, vayispar Shlomo kol anoshim agerim asher beeretz Yisrael. Shlomo Mel conducted a census to count the number of gerim. 
And he found that there were 150,000 gerim. And what did he do with these 150,000 gerim? They were the schleppers that would carry things. And 80,000 of them were chotzei bahar. They would, you know, dig out the mountains. So we see that there were 70,000 Nosi Sabal, 80,000 Chotzei Har, and that they were Gerim. It says explicitly. Kamari asked the following question. Now, when him David Gazar Leim, was David the one who originated this Gzera on the Nesinim? Hello, Moshe Gazar Leim. During the time of Moshe, there were Goyim amongst the seven nations who tried the Arma. Right, in, a, in a sneaky way to become Gerim. And when Moshe Rabbeinu found out about it, that they were from the seven Umos, that it says, Lo Sechai Kol Neshama, Gazar Aleim Moshe Avdus, he made them into Avodim. Tichsiv Michotei Veitzecha Choi Veimecha. So from the fact that it mentions Chotei Veitzecha, it's mashma that they were not part of Klal Yisrael. And they were not part of the Gerim either. They were Avodim. So it means that Moshe Rabbeinu already refused to accept them as Gerim. And they and he made it in and made them into Geir, and made them into Avodim. So again, even before the Gzera of David, there was an Issa to marry these people who try to, you know, fake us and, uh, and convert. Right. And therefore they would be considered Avodim. And with regard to Avodim, the, the Torah says, Lo Yek Kadesh. Moshe Gazel Lahu Dara. David Gazel Kule Dara. Moshe Rabbeinu had a limited Zerah only for that generation, but it would not apply to the next generation. Whereas David made it for all generations. Fakati, Yoshua Gazer Alayu. Why do you think it was David who did the Xer? It was Yoshua. The Siv, the Posik says in Sefer Yoshua, by Yitnaim Yoshua, Yoshua took the Yevonim by Yomahu and he made them into Chotve Eitz of Eshove Maim La Eda, Ula Mizbach Hashem. So he instituted the for all generations to come. That they would be avodim, mayim, means they couldn't marry into the Jewish people. So we see that even before David Amel instituted his gzera, Yoshua had already made them into avodim liola, and you're not let to marry an evid. And Gemara answers Yoshua Gazar, it's man to base Hamigdash Kayam. Yoshua's Gzera for Chotve Eitzim and Chove Mayim when it's Be'ach Hashem was only during the period of the Beis Hamikdash. However, after the destruction, we don't have a Mizbeach, they're not Avodin. But David Gazar, Bizman Shein Beis Hamikdash Kayom, David prohibited marry, allowing them to marry even after the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. And now we turn to the Fine Testament Beis. Be may Rebbe Bikshu Lahatir and Nesinim. There were those who requested that we now can allow the Nesinim to marry, to uh, convert and marry into the Jewish people. Amalem Rebbe, Rebbe put his foot down. He says the following Chelkenu not to. You can allow them freedom so that they don't have to serve you. That would be if it was only a matter of your personal, you know, expecting their employment, etc. their work as Avodin. But chelik mizbeach mi yatir. The purpose of making them chot ve'etzim and chot mayim was that they should serve the, the mizbeach. We don't have the right to be matir, that status of Avodin. Upliga de Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. Rebbe rejects Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. The Omer Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Omer Rabbi Yochanan, Chelek 
Eda li olam osur, chelik mizbech with man she beis amigdish kaim osur, ein beis amigdish kaim shori. So Rabbi Yechia bar Abba says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan that the part, the partnership and ownership of the Nesinim that belong to us as private citizens, we need Bezdin to be matter that. But as far as the Chilik Mizbech is concerned, we don't have to be matter that because the Beis Hamigdash is no longer Chai V'Kayim. So therefore, automatically, that Chilik of the Mizbech is mutter, And therefore, we have the authority through Bezdin to be matter the Avdus of the Givonim, of the Nesinim. Okay, and this leads us to the Mishnah on Daf Ayin Tesamit Beis. We have a few more minutes. Let's just see if we can accomplish the Mishnah. Okay. Okay, then? So the yep. Mishnah addresses the dinim of a man or a woman who cannot have children. Are they Chayovim in Yibum? So this is going to be the Sugya of a Saris. Now, a Saris could be one of two categories. Either he was naturally from birth defective in his body, and therefore he cannot bear children, and then there's a Saris that was subject to some sort of human intervention, a Maka, and he became a Saris. Om Rabbi Yeshua, Shamati, I heard something, but I don't know how to interpret it. Sha Saris cholates v'cholzim ishto, that if his brother dies, and she, his sister-in-law, falls to him for even when he's a Saris, he has to give a chalitza. And if he is married to a woman and he dies, then his wife has to get chalitza from his surviving brother. But I heard the exact opposite. In other occasions, in other scenarios, that he's not in chalitza for his late brother's wife. And his wife does not require chalitza. The only lefarish. I don't know exactly what I heard. Under what situations is there no requirement of chalitza, and under what is there requirement? I'm going to explain the distinction. Saris Adam cholates v'cholzin ishto. If he was normal at one point in his life. But then he had some sort of a uh, a situation where they were misaris him, and as a result, he became a sris adam. And the mafarshim here say that basically it means anyone who became a sris. Adam means anyone who became a Saris during his lifetime. He wasn't born that way. Like, let's say, for example, he was attacked by an animal. Or he had an injury in which he fell in that place. And why in that case is there Chalitza? Says Rabbi Akiva, At one point in his life, he was not a Saris, he was Roy Laholid. He could be Makai the mitzvah of, of Yibum and Chalitza. And therefore, we're not Mafkir the mitzvah later on when he became a Saris and he's Chayiv in the mitzvah of Chalitza. Now we have another category, Sris Chama. Sris Chama means that in the mother's womb, he was already a Saris. He never had a moment in which he was capable of having children. From the moment he entered into this world, he was already a sris chama. And the word chama means that he never saw the sunshine unless he was a saris, meaning from the moment that he was out in the sun and born, he was Eino Roy Laholit, the Olam. And therefore, there's no reason to be Mechaev, his wife's uh, brother, to give his wife Chalitza or to Mechaev that his wife needs Chalitza. 
Now the Gemara quotes the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, an alternative understanding of that Shmua of Rabbi Yeshua. Loki, I don't agree with the distinction of Rabbi Akiva Ella, just the opposite. If from birth he was a Saris, then he's in the parish of Chalitz. Why? In other words, if the Srisus was natural from the time he was a, uh, an embryo in his mother's womb, then we have reason to believe that if we find the proper procedure, we can cure him of his reasons. Therefore, he's chayiv in chalit. If he had a za catastrophe, then his physical ability of having children is completely destroyed. It can never be healed. And in fact, Hayid Rabbi Yoshua ben Becerra Al Ben Megubas, Megusas. Okay, there's a Jerusalem Jew by the name of Ben Megusas. And he was a Sris Adam. And now we're going to see that we have a, a testimony to support Rabbi Akiva. The Yibu as Ishto. And Rabbi Yeshua Ben, ben Becerra testifies that. When he died, his wife fell for Yibu. Lakayim did Rabbi Akiva. So we see that we pass him like Rabbi Akiva. Sris Adam is Cholets for Cholzin Leishto Mipnei Shaelos Shasa Kosh. The Mishnah continues. Hasaris. Again, now the Mishnah is using a generic term. It's either a Sris Chama according to Rabbi Akiva or Sris Adam according to Rabbi Eliezer. In other words, it's not enough that his uh, brother's wife is Pturim in Chalitza, it's Osir Liyabma. Because we go back to Eshes Ach Shalom Bavakum Mitzvah. The Chain Islands. Lo Cholitzes Velo Mitzvah. Asar is Shacholatz Liyavimto. Now, what happens, again, whatever the Tsarist is, according to Rabbi Kiva, according to Rabbi Lezer, he gave uh, Chalitza. And the Gemara, the Mishnah says, the, the Chalitza is meaningless. Lope Sala, she can marry a Kohen. However, Baala, if he had beer with her, which means that he violated the Easter Erev of Eishas Achiv, because in the Swiss, for this Chama or Adam, there's no Yivum, so Mela there's a, an Erev, is Psala, she becomes Psula Kunib Neshi Be'ilas Nuts. We have a principle called Nivalel Apostola, Apostola Menach Kahuna. Bechem the Islands. The same dinam apply to an Islandess, where there's no Chiv Chalitza, Chalzula Achim, if they gave a Chalitza, Lo Paslu, it's meaningless. Salua, if one of the brothers would have a deal with her, Salua, she becomes completely disqualified from Kahuna Mitnesha Bi'ilasa Bi'ilas Znus. Her Bi'ila is a Bi'ilas Znus, because since there's no Chi of Yibum, she's a Surah Achim, as an Ashes Ach, and a Bi'as Iser makes her into a Zona and passes her from, from Kahuna. Okay, then, so this is where we'll stop. And I wish you a great week. And okay, thank you so excellent. Much. Thank you, Skyar. Thank you so Very much. Nice.